WWE Hall of Famer Ricky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express reflects on Hawk and Animal, the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors. Hear more on Episode 5 at rickymortononline.com of the School of Morton podcast. you got to understand, it's a whole different ball game. When they were around us in NWA, you know, me and Robert were the top babyface tag team. And they, they knew that. You know, a lot of things that, you know, people could say that Mike and, and Joe were really stiff and really this and that and that, but they were business guys. They, they worked with Robert and I, and we'd tear the houses down. But you, you see, now they, we're back in a different era. You know, Robert and I didn't have the position that that we did in NWA. We was uh, we would just stay there. And when, when we worked with the Road Warriors, you know, it was our job to get them over, and I was glad to do that. Like you said, I, I was saying earlier, Scotty, uh, really we were lost in the shuffle. It was so much going on. Now, as a part of the action in 1998 with WWE, you were facing some opponents that I saw you with, and many others did too, during your time in Jim Cornette's Smoky Mountain Wrestling, like Skull and Eight Ball. That would be Ron and Don Harris. Yes, sir. Let me tell you, Ron and Don Harris, what a great run that we have with these guys in Smoky Mountain. See, a whole different thing. This is how you can change your uh, your gimmick, or if that's the way you want to say it, or, or change who you are in business. You know, Ron and Don Harris, when they were in Smoky Mountain, they had the long hair. Both of these guys, what, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, big, huge guys. And that's in the Smoky Mountain era, it was more like the, the David and Goliath, uh, where the baby faces uh, chase the heels. We had such great matches with, with them guys. And then they went to uh, WWF, and that's where they shaved their heads. Eight ball and skull. <laughs> and then change was Brian Lee. Brian Lee, you know, involved, you know, hit Brian Lee and Candido. Were, uh, had a good, great run together in the Smoky Mountain area. But when they came up, it, it was great, you know. But you had to change everything. When we wrestled uh, the Harris Brothers in the... WWE, you know, everything was changed. We go over some matches, they go over in some matches, but we were just in the middle of the cards. We wasn't the top tag teams. It was fun being around. I mean, dude, when you're in a territory such as WWF and you got uh, Mike Tyson and you got Steve Austin in the back and what? Uh, uh, the what? Rock, the Rock, <laughs> and gosh, you know, it's before the Rock. The Rock was right on the er- edge of moving in behind Steve Austin to take his place and wow man was it exciting at that time that's when the road warriors had left and came back with a new thing it's they changed their gimmick just a little bit uh, that's why they brought Sonny out with them just something that was different and something that was new I can't recall if it even got over or not I don't I don't know the part because you know the people were used to seeing Paul Eller and Paul Eller and talking for him and and Sonny I you know, everybody has a story about Sunny. Well, she was a big part of Smoky Mountain Wrestling, too. That's where she really got over. Uh, and, uh, I always got along with her when it came to the girl wrestlers. I know that her and Chris Candido, they were seeing each other. But, you know, when you get into the personal life, I didn't involve. We just we just drew money with them, and that's all I can really say. That's all I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty, uh, get that shovel and throw that dirt. <laughs> Rambalama, Bambalama, rock and roll.